welcome to the ATX TV Festival on the couch. I'm here. This is Damon Lindelof, my friend and writing hero. Haha. <laughs> um, and I'm going to start with like literally the easiest question, maybe. Do you think you're an actual showrunner? Uh, or, or, and if so, like, what's your process? How do you do it? It's a, that, that's a weird, it's always been a weird word that doesn't feel like it entirely fits me or, or the way that I perceive the job or, or, or how I do the job. I, I understand that like the culture demands that there is a person um, who is responsible for the, the vision of, of something, but I've always rebelled against the idea in movies that the director gets like the film by credit. Um, it doesn't mean that the director doesn't have an immense um, um, contribution to what the finished work is, but it's like, it's such a collaborative process. Television is even more collaborative. And so I, I think that there are multiple people at the top, all of whom have a, a high degree of autonomy and trust um, in terms of what they do. And, um, and then at the end of the day, there is going to be an individual or a couple individuals who are locking the cuts, you know, that the final, the final step in the process in the editing room of saying, this is kind of what people are gonna see. Um, and, and those people are determined to be the showrunner. So I do tend to lock the cuts, um, but I don't know how to direct. I would be very bad at directing. Um, and, uh, and so I, I give a tremendous amount of trust and autonomy to, to the directors on the shows that I work on. And so on Lost, I think Jack Bender was just as much of a showrunner as Carlton and I were because he ran Hawaii. I feel the same way about Mimi Leader on The Leftovers and the same way about Nicole Cassell and uh, Stephen Williams. Um, Nicole, obviously, a little bit more significantly because she directed the pilot of Watchmen and determined so much of what the tone of the show was. So I... I am a showrunner, but not the showrunner, I guess would be the, the answer to your, your question. Absolutely. And you say you don't and don't think you can direct. And I, I'm going to call a little bit of bullshit on that on your behalf, because I'm in the, one of those super duper secret writers rooms um, where people talk shit about each other um, and uh, oh. for good and for bad. But uh, the feedback on you from Watchmen was that you make it so clear to every director, specifically on that Stephen Williams episode, the, the one that was going through time and all the different transitions and stuff, that you were so clear about shot for shot, everything that you wanted, beat for beat, tone for tone, that it, is, it was as if you were behind the camera and that you are very, very good at communicating what you want. So I'll let you sit on that while you think about the career you're not supposed to have. I will just say immensely flattering and also respectfully disagree. You know, I mean, that script was written by Cord Jefferson and I and, and Steven, uh, we talked to him about what it was the ambition of it before we wrote a draft. And he said to me, I think that there's a version of this that's like Birdman, not a single shot, but we would vignette. And I was like, I will write the script accordingly. And so I think that you're riffing and passing the ball back and forth to the point where I, what I'm solving for is to get everybody to use the we pronoun. Um, we all have a lot of I invested in these shows. We care about it. We take it very personally, but it's like once everyone naturally starts saying we, that's when, um, that's when it's humming. So like, again, uh, very flattering, but like, uh, I can't imagine there's no way I would have been able to do for that episode what Steven did for it, not in a billion years. It has always been a community. It's just been a community under certain kinds of personalities that wanted to kind of seize and take hold of all the credit. So yeah. it's, it's an interesting way to think of that, but good for you. The, you know, the, the, the major criticism that I've always gotten from the, the writer's rooms that I've run is that like, we can tell when you don't like an idea right from the jump. And so don't, don't, don't waste like two or three hours of our time oh, being, pity, pity being politic <laughs> about it. Just tell us right out of the gate that you don't like it. So I think like there needs to be someone in the room that is like, that is ultimately going to do this or this or else you just spin and spin and spin forever. Like, I think that um, like you don't want to have a hung jury when it comes to the fact that there's a deadline approaching, you know? And so I, I can be the decider when I need to be, but I very often can be have my mind changed 
and passion always wins. And so like, I, I, I definitely appreciate the responsibilities of leadership. Um, but I also, I, I want to feel like it's more of a Republic than a benevolent dictatorship. Yeah. I mean, you have to talk to the people in those rooms to see how they perceive it. But, um, you know, it's, uh, as you know, it's, it's, um, it's a place where, uh, it's in a very intimate space. It's very, it can get very raw. Yeah. Do you think that you could teach what you do? Are you the kind of person that could sit down in front of a group of young aspiring showrunners and say, this is a, this is one way to do it. Do you feel confident that your skill set is something that should be taught or would you just tell people to stay away? Great question. I mean, I'm not sure that I could. I think like the best, it's interesting because for the people who are watching this, I don't know if they know that you are responsible for my career. Like, yeah. and I mean that in, a, in, in the most direct, non-flattering, just factual and beautiful <laughs> way that I was a writer's assistant on Kevin's show, Wasteland, and Kevin was doing many things simultaneously. And so there was a leadership vacuum there at the time and that vacuum allowed me to, you know, take us a, a fairly non-traditional route to becoming a writer. Um, but I was learning by doing. It's a learn on the job profession show running. And I've, I'm, there's certainly guidance, mistakes that I've made um, that I could, and, and things that I got right that I could pass on. There's a lot of things that I learned from Carlton, who was my mentor, Carlton Cuse, who later became my partner on Lost, but he, he on, on, on Nash Bridges, which was the first television show that I worked on after Wasteland, he was really like, come into my office, watch me do this, sit in the editing bay, watch me do this, ask me questions. Um, and I think like, I'd be fairly good at like the Socratic method of teaching. Like if someone was just sort of shadowing me and asking me questions, but I don't think like I could, I could have a course, I could teach show running 101. The Damon, um, the Damon Lindelof masterclass. Like, so there, there's no, there's no, there's no, this is how you do it. Yeah, no, there isn't. And, and, and ultimately you have to find what works for you and it, you have to wade through a lot of dysfunction to get to the function. Uh, it's, it's the 10,000 hours. If I had my way and if anybody is looking for a freelance James Lipton, like I would like to sit and interview you for like four hours. Um, but that being said, we are out of time here. So I just want you to finish with, the idea of the fraud complex, which you live in, you live and breathe in, and of course we all do, but for writers who are watching this who are new or frustrated or, you know, digging deep into their aspirational stuff, like explain what that is and why it's okay. The fraud complex, otherwise known as the emperor has no clothes, otherwise known as the dream that you have where you are standing in the wings of a high school or college performance and you have to go onto stage, but you don't know your lines or even what play it is. There's different iterations of this anxiety dream, um, but that, that you're ill prepared. People are about to find out that you don't know what you're doing. This is, you know, this is, um, something that I still feel. I feel like I'm a fraud. I also know that I have been successful. Um, so both things are true simultaneously. I'm not rejecting the successful part of myself, but this other part is, 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 is very real, even though there's a tremendous amount of empirical data that would seem to suggest that it's, that it's no longer true. And all I would say is try to reconcile those two parts of yourself. It's okay. I think that the fraud part is, is really just a fear of failure in disguise. Once you fall down a couple of times, once you fail, once you know like what it, what it feels like to fail, it does get less scary. The important thing to understand is that every writer that you could poll has felt at one point, if not at all points in their career, like this, they are one step away from being discovered that, no, that they don't know what they're doing. And so as a young writer or even a frustrated writer, like that feeling is okay. And mm -hmm. you can work your way past it when you understand that you're not alone in that fear and that that fear is actually one of many very raw and visceral emotions that you can actually tap into to be a great writer. Well, I love you. I'm so happy for all your success. I know you're miserable and that's okay too. Um, you have just blessed us all with such great television and now you're blessing Austin.
uh, and and all who are watching. With I miss podcast. Austin so much. Oh my God, it's one of the best places on the planet. And uh, I can't believe we don't get queso this year. I'm really oh really sad. What are the bats doing right now? What are the bats what? doing? What are they, they doing? Are they just <laughs> are flying they zooming? everywhere? They're <laughs> just they... going nuts. <laughs> they take it over the city. They're like, there's nobody on the bridge to watch us. Oh God, That's sadness. Sad. All right, I'll talk to you soon. And uh, thank you for joining. Thanks for having me. Thank you.